started this thing. I'm a New Testament guy, an early Christianity guy, like Brandon Cash said, but I've been like swimming in the Psalms for about a year and a half. I started this thing, and if you have me in class, you've heard me encouraging you, which is listening to Scripture. Like, this is how your ancient ancestors in the faith first received it. By and large, it was in community, hearing it and digesting it hourly, right, hearing it. And so I started this thing where I wake up before the sun comes up, and I hit play on the Psalms. I just hit play on the Psalms, and I, you know, brush my teeth, make my bed, throw my board in my, um, it's like an old GMC, I call it the hoopty. I throw my surfboard, and I, and I just drive down, and I go get in the water, and I'm listening to the Psalms every, the whole way down. I call it surfing. Psalms, surfing. So I've been doing this thing, and it's actually, I've been learning so much in those like 10 minute pieces. I, I, I've encouraged anyone to try this. It's very easy. It, you could be very passive about it. You hit play and you just go about your morning. And I've been learning so much from these, uh, this wonderful treasure in the middle of our sacred anthology of ancient texts we call the Bible. And this morning, I want to share with you one of those um, delightful gems that I have noticed and has gone deep into sort of my heart over the last couple of years. And it's the robust permissions that the Psalms afford the people of God. And let me explain what I mean. I want to talk specifically to all y'all. How many of you is it your first year here at Biola University? How many of y'all is the first year? Look around. Okay, that's so beautiful. How many of y'all are in your second year? Second year at Biola University. Okay, beautiful. How, third year? We'll do this the whole time. I'll use my whole time to just do this. How about that? Um, so especially for those of you that it's your first year, you come in to this place called the Bible Institute of Los Angeles University, and you may have ideas about what it looks like from what you've seen on the social media or what you've heard from friends or your campus tour. And you come to campus and immediately you're starting to look for like, okay, what does it look like to be Biola? Now, you may not admit this like up front, but I've talked to a lot of students in office hours and after class and even in class. And I know there's this pressure to kind of be Biola. Like, what is that anyway? But there's this thing, this amorphous shape that is the shape of a Biola student. And so we all, as sort of social creatures, we want to inhabit that space and kind of contort. And I'm, bi I'm very Biola right now. What I love about the Psalms is it like disrupts any notion of a cookie cutter emotional state. Like this is the emotional state you need to be in to be good Biola boy, good Biola girl. And you suddenly, you open up and start listening to the voices, the chorus, the harmonies of these incredible ancient songs and poems, and you go, wow. Sometimes it's actually shocking. And so what I wanted to look at today, I called this, I titled the sermon Highs and Lows, one of my favorite small group opener. Right? Let's do highs and lows. Spend the whole small group on that and then pray at the end. But highs and lows, it's a great way to kind of explore how someone's doing, but it's also a reality as a student. We're about a month in, a little more than a month in. And for those of you that you came here and you're like, this is going to be Christian Disneyland. I can't wait. Every day is a new adventure with Jesus, and I'm going to be in prayer huddles. I'm going to experience the Holy Spirit in my dreams. It's going to be in the water. It's everywhere. And then month hits, and you go, wow, I'm like blah, or I'm sad. Or some of you, you're going to come to Biola and you come from a background in a liturgy and a style of worship that's a little more expressive, right? Like there's some claps in the middle of the song. I love that. It's so exciting. Some of you are like, oh, that, we're just warming up. Like that's the start. Where's all the rest of it? And there's a sense of, well, it's Biola. You know, I got to be a little more, a little more contained than that. Um, or you're experiencing just such a high, high and you want to express it. And others you're in a place that's really solemn and really deep. And maybe there's a pressure to be an extrovert or to be optimistic. And you're like, I'm not there. And so this morning, I just want to give you a little sampling. I'm going to read to you a couple of these psalms and, um, and, and give you some permission. How about that this morning? A little permission. Uh, so 
I want to start off, the first permission I want to give you is permission to enjoy unabashed, unchained praise of God. Like an unabashed, unchained thanksgiving to God. You have full permission from your sacred tradition to be like recklessly in love with God in the place that you're in. I want to read you. This is from... Uh, Psalm 96, and you can follow along in your scriptures, but like I said, your ancient ancestors never did that, most of them. They actually heard it. Don't be ashamed. Read. That's great. But I want you also to be liberated to listen if you would like. Um, I'm going to read this out of the New International Version. This is Psalm 96. Sing to Yahweh, or sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. day. Declare his glory among all the nations, all the peoples. His marvelous deeds among the peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He's to be feared above all other gods. For all of the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering. Come to his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord as Yahweh reigns, the world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He'll judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. A little J.R.R. Tolkien shout out there. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. I wanted to read the entire psalm. Come on now. And there's so many more like that in the scriptures. Now, the vibe you get, and vibe is a very technical scholarly term. The vibe you get from this psalm is definitely not one of sort of a quiet, mellow like throw the catalytic converter on the engine of praise and just kind of cruise along. This is absolutely powerful and um, and open and emotional. I, I don't know if you've ever let loose. Has anyone here ever let loose in praise before? Like you just let loose, almost embarrassingly so. Okay, so I was, I was raised in, in a, a church tradition. We were like, very conservative separatist Baptist is what I would call it. Like we were, you know, small church and, and maybe, maybe the only church that was saved. That was kind of the vibe in the, in the group. And, and so like as expressive as you get is like a nice amen, right? And, and nothing wrong, by the way, as we'll get to, with a quiet space, a reflective space of quiet adoration for the Lord. Not at all. Nothing wrong with that. That's important and powerful. But it was like you couldn't really do anything else. And I was raised in kind of a tradition where, like, dudes don't get that expressive. And if you know me, I can't help myself, right? I just am a little bit spastic, a little bit excitable. I have a booming voice, I've been told. So I spit when I talk, which is, this is the splash zone here at SeaWorld. Good job. Um, and so for me, it was always difficult. But then there are those moments when I was um, about five years ago, I had this moment I was at Hume Lake. Anyone ever been up to Hume Lake before? Hume Lake? Great spot, beautiful spot right there in the Sequoias. And I was with a, a brother in the Lord, and we're running, and we're talking about life, we're talking about marriage, and we're just having one of those conversations. You know those conversations that are just like you hear the angels sing. It's like this incredible, wonderful moment of bonding and community. And we're just encouraging each other in these different areas, and it was a sweet time. It had just rained, and so the sun had come out, steam's coming off the highway. We saw a deer. Everything's verdant and green. And we're climbing up the, king, like the highway that goes over the King's Canyon. And we get to this lookout. And we've just been praying and thanking the Lord and praying for each other. And we look out, and there's this massive echo. I'm talking King's Canyon. You could, like, fit the Empire State Building in it. It's just huge. And we're like, echo, 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 echo. Caw-caw, 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 caw-caw. 
And then we just start going like, Lord, 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 thank you, thank you. You're good, God, God. And he's like also a guy that was studying Hebrew. And so we're like, we're like going off and just yelling. And it was this rad moment. And then we start, no one's around, and we start going for it. We're just like looking at each other, and we're having this moment. We're praising the Lord. We're yelling. And then all of a sudden, boom, God shows up. No, there's a, there's a giant thunder, like this giant thunderclap like right next to us, and we, at this point, I'm tearing my shirt off. I'm rolling around. We're like, yeah, like there's like a, a church bus driving by kids. Don't look out the window. A ranger is like, there's a live one out here. Uh, call it in. But we, it was this really crazy moment, and we both kind of r- r- raised in a similar place, but the freedom to, in that space, just say, this is where I'm at, and I'm pulling the catalytic converter off of it. I'm not driving the Autopia car where you floor it, and you can only go two miles an hour. You have robust permission in the scriptures to be in exactly that state if the Holy Spirit is drawing you into that. And I think this is important for so many reasons. It's not saying this is the only good state. We'll see in a minute. There's a lot of places that we have permission to occupy with the Lord. But there are exciting things happening right now in this country and around the world coming out of the pandemic The Holy Spirit of the living God is on the move. We've heard, we've seen, we've experienced, but I'm telling you, there's something different going on on this campus, in my classrooms, and the hunger I've seen, not just for community, but a desperate hunger for the Lord. I was talking to um, uh, Professor Andrews. She teaches um, uh, BBST 103, a section of it. She's also a pastor at my church. She had just did a Hume Lake Chapel, and the Lord moved the, it was a women's retreat. The women stayed for five hours into midnight just worshiping. I'm talking all ages of women. I've never heard of something like that happening. We, we see things that are going on where the Spirit seems to be doing something special. And especially if you come from a background like me, it could be a little bit like, am I allowed to really express what I want to say to God right now? And I want to say you have permission This is not the shape of Biola. You better be this, otherwise, no. But if this is where you're at, I want you to know you have permission from the scriptures to be on those high highs. And that's a beautiful, beautiful permission that we have. And there are so many other scriptures like this as you just trip over them as you're um, moving through the psalm. Psalm 106, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or declare his praise? It's just too great. Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. The, and then ask the question, has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. It's like, stop sitting there. If, if you have something to say, say it. Woo, okay. All fired up. Beautiful things. Beautiful things. Thank you. Um, Permission to be in those low lows. Now, this one, I think, is equally uncomfortable when you think about this fictitious avatar of the Biola shape. Like, what is a good Biola person? The low lows can be some of the scariest places. Like, I was born and raised in a public school system, and I had a great experience and loved it. It was plenty of hard things. But I remember I went to junior college, and then I transferred into Biola, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be the spot where it's going to be like the day spa of spiritual formation at every turn, every moment, and I'm only going to go from higher highs and glory to glory at all places. And you all know right now, right? I mean, come on. It's not just because it's early for some of you. You know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, reality hits, and you go, wow, I'm lonely. Wow, that anxiety that I thought I had kicked or I thought this place would be the panacea to cure it, that's still there. Or wow, that, that struggle, that sin issue that had haunted me, I thought Biola was going to kind of just like eviscerate it once I got into the protective cocoon of this place. It's still there. Or maybe I'm actually asking questions of my faith I didn't think I would ever ask. And I'm at Biola, and that could be terrifying, especially if you feel like you don't have permission to acknowledge exactly where you are and how you are. 
And here's what I want to give you. Not permission from Dr. P, pseudo-psychologist, telling you it's okay to feel what you feel. I'm not going to give you that kind of permission. I would rather go to our sacred scriptures, open those up, and say, show me. And this is what you find when you do surfing, by the way. When you wake up and you hit play, here's what you find. Like most of the Psalms, or like the majority of the Psalms seem to be at lament. They have something in them of lament or they're entirely lament. I'm gonna read you a couple examples. This is from Psalm uh, 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Anyone here wrestling with your thoughts, right? How long, day after day, will I have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me, Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I've overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I'll sing the Lord's praise for he has been good, right? Yeah, it's this... It's this really honest, unbridled, unfiltered expression of lament to God that begins, it starts not with using ChatGPT to edit the whole thing and make it a nice, crisp and clean cry, but it's just like a visceral, honest, poetic, powerful expression of pain, disillusionment, and challenge, which then takes all of that and puts it safely in the lap of God. It says, God, here is all of it. And I think this is really important. I'm gonna read one more, Psalm 44. There are just a bunch of these. Psalm 44, it begins, I'm gonna summarize for a minute. It begins with, we have heard with our ears, O God, what our ancestors have told us, what you did in their days, in days long ago. And it walks through all of God's basically protection and um, favor to his people, Israel. And the psalmist said, we heard all about that. I hear people talking about that. And then it kind of turns a corner. It says, verse 9, but now you've rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies. You made us retreat before the enemy. Our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up to be devoured like sheep. You scattered us among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing from their sale. You made us a reproach to our neighbors, scorn and derision for those around us. You made us a byword among the nations. People shake their heads at us. and live in dis- I live in disgrace all day long. My face is covered with shame at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who's bent on revenge. All this came upon us, verse 17, though we hadn't forgotten you. We have not been false to your covenant. Our hearts had not turned back. Our feet didn't stray from your path, but you crushed us. You made us a haunt for jackals. You covered us with deep darkness. If we'd forgotten your name, O God, or we spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it, since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake, we face death all day long and are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Verse 27, awake, Lord, why do you sleep? Whoa, hold on, did you hear that? Are you allowed to say that in an honest, and this is a public moment, by the way, this has been read by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Are you able to say that? I'm serious. That's not comfortable for me. I'm gonna be honest, it's not comfortable to say that, but here it is. In the middle of our inspired and errant sacred tradition. And then it ends, I'm gonna just skip to the last two verses. We're brought down to the dust, our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us, rescue us because of your chesed, your unfailing love. What do we see here? We see, the, the point I'm making is you have permission to express in all of its fullness exactly the despair, the anxiety, the fear, the frustration, the loneliness that you are experiencing. We could put like Axe body spray all over it, duct tape it up, 
make a nice happy face, maybe a Jesus fish, and be like, I'm Biola now. I'm good to go. Ah, you know what? It's tough, but God's got this. That's fine. But what I'm telling you is honest expression of exactly where you're at is all over your sacred tradition. You, you can't, you can try to avoid it. It's going to find you again and again and again. And I think it's calling us and reminding us the safest place to put your deepest, most painful, most dark thoughts is safely in the hands of God and unabashedly in the hands of God. I'll never forget the, the, the hardest moment of my life, and I'll just share a little personally here, the hardest moment of my life without a doubt. Uh, my family, we're, we're foster family. We uh, have two bio kids, and we have one, one of our, little guys, our littlest we adopted, and we fostered uh, over four kids, or four kids, not over four kids. And um, we had one little guy for, for a year and a half, and it was heading towards adoption, and we, we were a foster adopt home, so we're always open to that. And you fall in love with these kids. You, you can't not. You can't guard your heart. They've had enough of that in their life, people guarding their heart. And so we made it a point of, like, we're going to, any child that comes to our house, for the time they're here, they're part of our family in all its fullness. And, and this little guy I, I love, I think about him, I cry for him every day. And right before COVID, some crazy things happened in his case, as can happen in L.A. County. And um, he was just quickly reunified in a space that we think was probably not the best. And we weren't even able to say goodbye. It was this very rare, and I want to encourage you if you're going into foster care, praying about it. This is a really rare one. And we, we were told that. The social worker actually got fired, which is also really rare, for doing this. But it was the most devastating moment. My 10-year-old baby girl, my oldest, I just, I'll never forget the moment in our living room when we, when we knew he wasn't coming home from his visit. And she's collapsed on the ground. And just weeping. And I didn't have any slick words. I didn't have any platitudes. I love apologetics. I love philosophy. I love theology. But at that moment, explaining God and evil and redemption, I didn't have that. I just, I reached for a Bible and I opened to the Psalms and I just started reading them and crying them out. Jesus on the cross cries out, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. He processes the weight and the pain and the, dis, the dis, disturbing, painful reality of taking the world's sins upon himself, being naked, abandoned, betrayed. How does he process all of that? He wasn't stoic Jesus. All right, let's get this done. And it is finished. He's in agony. He processes the pain with Psalm 22, he goes to the archive of Israel's Psalms and runs the pain through it and expresses it out. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I guess why I'm sharing that, and I appreciate you letting me get a little emotional, not that I let that stop me, but um, I want you to know like there is a space and a place for processing these things. And so you're going to hit Last week, Dr. Van Lant shared with us, you're going to hit hard things. It will happen for you. I am so sorry if I'm the first one telling you that. It will. It's a matter of when, not if. You have a robust permission to process that pain in all of us. So for everything from the highest high to the lowest lows and why, and this is my last piece, I'm going to pray. We're going to worship the God who is faithful. Why do we have permission to be where we're at in the high highs and in the low lows. What theological truth allows for this? I'm going to find this out of Psalm 136. I want to teach you a word. I want everyone to say with me, chesed. Get that guttural in there, chesed. Yeah, really enjoy that. Really get in there. That term, translated variously, and I have my two Hebrew Bible scholars here with me, uh, translated variously, loving kindness, faithfulness, the chesed of God is his def one of his defining attributes, one of his defining characteristics. The loving kindness of God. Look at Psalm 136. I want everyone to say something with me. I'm, I'm going to give you a line to say. It's going to be, Ki la olam chazdo. Okay, so let's say it together. Right? Ki la olam chazdo. I like that. Okay, let's do it again. Ki la olam chazdo. So a chesed is a personal pronoun at the end of it, so it sounds different there. But what that translates into is because his loving kindness 
or because into forever is his loving kindness. Literally, Yoda speak translated. Because into forever is his loving kindness. Okay, so give thanks, Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Ki la olam chazdo. Okay, let loose on the next one. Give thanks to the God of gods. Ki la olam Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give th- oh, to him who alone does great wonders. Ki la olam chazdo. Who by his understanding made the heavens. Ki la olam chazdo. Who spread out the earth above the waters. Who made the great lights. The sun to govern the day. The moon and the stars to govern the night. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on recounting God's provision and salvation history and ending with this. What what am I saying? The reason you can be unabashedly where you are on those high highs and those low lows. Biola student. is because of his loving kindness that goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And so I encourage you, I'm going to pray, and we're going to worship this God, but I encourage you, as we're in the thick of the semester at this point, if you're in that high, high, you have permission to occupy that space. If you're in the meh, you have permission to commune with the Lord in that space. And if you're in the desperate low lows, you have permission to express and with dignity be in that space with the Lord because his loving kindness, his chesed, goes into forever and ever. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.